Welcome to Upon a Time at Eduardo Secchi Gallery in Florence. This time protagonists are five women artists from Italy, from the UK, from Ukraine, that share a common experience at Palazzo Monti. The artists at the same time are writers, protagonists of this fable, of this story, of these myths, of which they create protagonists, but also that are part of, of their own stories. The show presents a variety of mediums. We can start with this ceramic piece by Bebo Nafini that presents a variety of different colors, a variety of glass as well, and salt water from the sea that really embodies in a small yet powerful piece Bonafini's practice. The mix of material represents also how she manages to take upon herself the use of different materials, merge them, fabricate them, mix them in, in a way that is quite potent and quite unusual. Unusual like the materials that she uses. In this specific case, we have colored clay that's mixed so that it doesn't necessarily become one specific color, yet we can see the individual stratification, the individual colors that make this piece. And only after comes the shape that is quite enigmatic and quite unstable. Many people may see different items and different shapes, different meanings into Biafini's work, as we will see in the tapestry that's also in the show. We're then moving on to Daria Dmitrenko, who's a painter that doesn't really think much before grabbing the oil brush and starting to work. There's no preparatory drawings, there's no sketches, there's no scale. The work just happens and evolves. It asks questions, it doesn't really provide a specific answer, and it really represents perfectly Daria's practice that sort of takes us by hand and brings us along one of her stories, creating these creatures that are invented yet sort of have a lot of elements that we recognize. The figures of Daria are obviously mythical, they are magical, they may exist in our dreams or nightmares. And there's something familiar that sort of makes us think that we've seen this image before. Very much so like in Carla Giaccio, Daria's paintings, where figures that are anthropomorphic, objects from the past that we have never really seen, yet we think we have seen and experienced and touched and felt, sort of come together to give us this illusion of a shared memory that sort of belongs in a perhaps a parallel world, but really makes us feel, I would say, equally comf comfortable and uncomfortable. There's this idea of almost looking into someone's past, maybe your past, but really it's nobody's, because that really sort of picks and chooses from her own memories and and research to create these situations, these this figures, these moments, these elements that definitely have a sort of anatomical approach. The, the body is very much at the center of the practice, whether depicted as a subject uh, with, with sort of figures that we relate to or, or items such as, such as this bracing element that sits on, on a stool. We, we share memories, perhaps, that are built into our DNA, into our culture, into our, our history, in the fact that we, we lived and grew up in the same country or watched the same TV programs, and, and yet there's no reference to anything pop, anything super contemporary, although we, we do really engage with, with the color, with the palette, with the shape in, in quite a, a unique way. The world of Daria and 
Kerala, which may be a bit ghostly, a bit of a faded memory, is way more present, way more defined, way more figurative in Sophie Spedding's practice. Her creatures, these post-human animals, are much more defined, they're more easy to sort of relate to, and they take us by hand, throwing us into this world where we're equally viewers and participant of, of this shared story. The world also that belongs to Sophie can somehow be compared to Sahara's, uh, yet is very, very different. Uh, Sophie's parallel world is quite magical, is quite um, obviously non-existing, at least in, in our dimension, whereas Sahara gets inspired by historical references of both painting and narrative from Baroque, from Renaissance, and she just basically replaces the subjects of, this, of these moments by creating a story that we all are very well aware of. She doesn't create anything magical, she, she just puts places, people in, in, in places that do exist. Although creating situations that really have never happened by, by placing people of color in moments of history and in society where unfortunately they never really belong to in a way. It's extremely refreshing. It's giving us hope as if we are looking into an ideal past that hopefully will be a definite future. And I can really see how some of the elements of the color of this sort of creating a distinct break from one figure to the other, from the figure itself, where we can see this, this strong line of, of the color that sort of creates different patches, almost apply to the way that Bea Bonafini's approaches the, the work of tapestry, which is another technique that she masters. Definitely my favorite sort of artist that applies her knowledge to, to this technique. Here we're looking at this massive tapestry that sort of lives within the two worlds of being a bit of a carpet, a bit of a tapestry on the ceiling. Maybe there's really no one single use to this piece or maybe the bigger question is, is there only one use for any other piece of art or, or any other item that exists on this, on this planet? But if we turn around, if we turn the piece around, we will always be able to find different shapes. There's positives, there's negatives, such as the head that's built into that, what looks like a leg. The fabrics also change. Each color belongs to a different fabric. Sometimes it's a bit more hairy, other times it's a bit more sharp and, and dry. And the final, and perhaps one of the most potent elements, is given by this addition of pigments that are massaged into the fabric, which used to be white, and really gives this sort of precious and, and extremely delicate intervention where we can always almost imagine the artist sort of going through this process. Mm -hmm.